A SpaceX rocket booster is on course to collide with the moon in just over a month from now. The derelict rocket stage has been orbiting around the Earth since it was launched back in 2015, and now its orbit is set to intersect with the moon in early March, likely causing a fiery crash. So what is this all about? Well, let's bring in Leroy Chow. He's a retired NASA astronaut and a former commander of the International Space Station. Welcome, Leroy. Uh, what can you tell us about why this object will crash into the moon after some seven years above our heads. So the upper stage is necessary to put the spacecraft into the right orbit, into the right position. And this is not an unusual maneuver, uh, depending on, you know, different rockets. They're all going to be using upper stages to do this. So SpaceX hasn't done anything out of the ordinary. Now, it's very complex with the orbits being affected of this rocket booster being affected by the Earth, the Moon, and the Sun. And so it's difficult to predict what's going to happen with it. And it just so happens that uh, it looks like in March, early March, as you pointed out, it will collide with the moon. Now, uh, there are any number of other boosters that are kind of in similar orbits, so it's certainly, you know, not going to be the first time something like this happens. Will this have any impact on the moon beyond creating another crater? All of this is, you know, based on estimations. Is there any probability that this thing crashes on something we've left up there before? Not really. It's going to be impacting the, uh, the far side of the moon. So the only artificial spacecraft that we have up there, or the Earth has up there, China has a rover that is operating on the far side. But the chance of it, it hitting that are pretty small. So I would say that it's uh, going to be something that's, you know, uh, we're, we're not even going to be, uh, we're not going to be able to observe it unless the Mars, uh, the, the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter is able to, to get a picture of the crash site. But um, it's nothing certainly to worry about. And I want, to, I want to shift gears now to what we've all been captivated with um, over the past few weeks, the, the James Webb uh, Space Telescope from NASA. It reached its final destination earlier this week. Um, tell us exactly where it's located and what we can expect to see from this telescope, because it's not lost on me and so many others that it is truly remarkable that it made it through each stage, each precise stage, um, to get to where it is now. So what happens next? Well, that's right. This uh, this spacecraft, everything had to go exactly right. Uh, the mirror had to unfold properly. All the systems had to work. The antennas had to unfold, and it all went perfectly. It had to maneuver to its current position, which we call the second Lagrange point uh, in the Sun-Solar-Earth system. So if you draw a line between the Earth and the Sun and then go uh, away from the Earth and the Sun, it's at a point about a million miles away, farther away from the Sun, directly in line with the Earth in the sun. And so it needs to be in that position because that's where the gravitational forces are balanced and it doesn't take much fuel to keep it there. But the reason it has to be so far away and pointed away from the Earth and the sun is that it's going to be making infrared uh, observ observations, in other words, infrared radiation, which is basically heat. And so it has to be away from warm objects like the Earth and the sun. In fact, the mirror is going to be cryo-cooled. There's going to be a cryogenic fluid cooling the mirror down to very very low temperatures so it can make those observations. And these are going to be unprecedented. This, this telescope is going to look billions of years, light years away. A light year, of course, is the distance that light travels in one year. So imagine it's going to be observing something like 13 some odd billion light years away, almost all the way to the edge of the Big Bang. And so we're going to be seeing things that we have never observed before and uh, very exciting to, to uh, you know, wait for those discoveries. It is truly stunning, especially the way that, that you break it down. Just in our last few seconds, when will we see the first picture? It's going to take about another five months for this telescope to finish doing its calibrations and adjustments and tune everything up, and then it should begin making observations sometime in the June or July time frame. So, uh, you know, not too much farther, not too much longer, considering this telescope has been uh, quite a number of years in the making. Yeah, yeah, like an intergalactic Polaroid. We just have to be patient. <laughs> Leroy Chow, thank you very much for speaking with us. We appreciate it.